I want to show you one of the attractions of our archaeological camp. This is our spring. We discovered the spring over here, dug it out, it was tightened. It existed since the ancient times. People inhabiting the settlement's area drank water out of the spring. Some students walked by, found a wet spot, dug into it. With just couples of bayonets and water came running out. First of all, right now, you and I are standing in geographically very interesting and beautiful place. Sometime in antiquity, this territory of northern Kazakhstan was a pre-glacial area. The border of the Saka world was right here. The settlement represents some sort of an outpost of the Saka world, Saka territories. We decided to create an open-air museum right here to demonstrate the rich and beautiful history of Kazakhstan, starting from the Stone Age. We want to create a platform to show how people of stone, bronze and early Iron Ages lived and worked. We found some clay in the Ishim river. We mix it with water, take out particles like stones and weeds, clearing the mix of unwanted things, throwing it all away, and then mix it until the desired consistency is reached. Then we get to the making of a thing itself, for example, a jar. First we lay out the bottom, the base, then we layer up these kinds of sausages, one after another, and then we let it dry. Then we start grinding it, grind all unevenness and bake it afterwards. The designing of the item is a final stage. I think that women back then did it the same way. This began a long time ago, the end of August 1968. Reconnaissance detachment consisting of three persons, Vladimir Grishenko, Kanans of Yuri and I, your humble servant. Very long ago, I was a schoolboy, and we have found this mound. It was an archaeological exploration. Three of us with backpacks were moving along the shore of Shim looking for archaeological sites and found this great settlement. I was a schoolboy when I joined the expedition. Everyone dreamed of finding some sort of treasure back then, looking for something digging in sandboxes. Then there were books about treasures and travels, and then I got into this expedition. Well, I made my decision to tie my life with archaeology. Nowadays, not many people are engaged in something as useful to society and to themselves. These folks chose expedition. They are engaged in science. These are Mamluk school students. They come and work with the expedition for the past few years. These houses, yes, we made them. First we put columns. We began by preparing the house, and then we put the poles. We cut willow, cleaned it, and wove walls for these houses. 
Then we made the roof, cut grass with shovels, dug out turf and placed it on top. We work with students and school children. We make these houses based on excavation drawings and then keep these dwellings in good condition by repairing. Upon the completion of works, it will be suitable for living in primitive conditions of the Bronze Age. People lived in these kind of constructions. They were on ground, half dug under the ground and almost dug out dwellings that went half a meter under the surface during different periods of the Bronze Age. Different types, log cabins or like this one. One or two hurdles start from the inside. Pillars are entwined, which is just a hurdle. The weaker fence could be in two rows with stuffing in between, but here we make one row. However, the accommodation next to it was built with two and is now in the process of coating. My friends and I built these houses. After that, we went into the forest for some firewood, looked for things. I've learned about their lifestyle, their occupation, the types of houses they had, and who were they fighting against. During the Stone Age, Mesolithic and Neolithic, people lived in construction like this, as well as in dugout dwellings. They were very light, since the climate was different. Nowadays our climate is warm summer continental. After it, there was an Ice Age, 12th millennium BC, with mammoths and furry rhinoceros, buffaloes, etc. Smaller animals appeared when the climate changed again. Therefore, forms of hunting changes as well, moving toward individual hunting practices. Small family cells appeared. During the Paleolithic era, the size of the prey required many hunters. Later form of individual hunting involved instruments like bow and arrow. We are making bows and arrows here as well, trying them out to see how well they shoot. Pretty well, actually. The man is the head of the family, and woman is a keeper of the hearth. Men went on the hunt, and women were sewing and making potions. Women were responsible for maintenance of the household. The rest was men's duty. If I am not mistaken, each tribe had its own customs. In some, women were on a par with men, while in other, their status was inferior to that of men. There were bone needles, various tools like hammer and anvil, and all of them were made manually. It is not as complicated as it might look, just need a skill. For instance, to drill a granite, we take a diamond drill. With kids, we do it using ancient technique, simple and easy. Developing these skills, the studying of the techniques of the past, this is what I do here. This is my theme. Here we reconstruct the technologies of the past. We want to display here. This is how people lived in the Stone Age or Bronze Age, and this is how they lived during Early Iron Age. Kids build homes, make tools, we instruct them how to do it. 
We also teach them how to make jewelry, clothes manually, without machines, based on ancient samples. These clothing and ornaments, full garments, including shoes, this whole look is made by hands, in field conditions, with only basic tools. This is our attempt of reconstruction of the Scythian girl costume. To make a final decision, we try to make two versions of the costume. This version is closer to the Western European, Black Sea region. The second one is more Pazuric, Scythian, Altai this reconstructed suit consists of the underwear white shirt with two colored stripes up the sleeves, yellow ribbon decorated with red tape on the sides. What is interesting about these sleeves is that they were pretty long and were decorated with so-called bracelets. These are completely asymmetrical leather laces with beads on them. The symmetry was not especially pursued. Some decorative pendants on clothing, especially those found inside wealthy women burials in the Black Sea region. There could be one quantity on one sleeve and completely different on another. There is no accurate data as to why was it made this way, but the fact is that if there was such concept as symmetry, they did not follow it. Another woman's costume, which we tried to recreate, is much closer to Kazakhstan, a Pazuric era costume. Pazuric female clothes were somehow different. The skirt was made by sewing together stripes of multicolor fabric. A skirt could have three to seven colors in general, maybe depending on the status of the owner. Well, this is not the proven fact. Or maybe depending on the availability of the fabric. If costumes were worn for a long time, some shreds were kept and used later on. Therefore, skirts differed on amount of stripes and width, but the principle of making was the same. Shirts were cut out of cloths, two fold parts and back not exactly like tunica, with a seam on a sleeve. It might have been a small tribal association, up to 50 people, who practically lived independently. Their surroundings provided everything for living. Such a rich area, this ecological niche, where life is plentiful and comfortable. In order to create this complex, we decided to imitate the life of a Stone Age here, for instance, Neolithic Bronze Age, to create an open-air museum right here so that upon starting the tour, you could see how the people lived throughout the epochs of our ancient history. When Saka tribe settled here, the climatic conditions were the same. Same are the beauties around us, meaning that we are admiring same views, same beauties, as did people of early Iron Age. Жители Сакские, этим любуемся сейчас мы с вами.